Live from Hazard, Kentucky, this is Jamin John's Wrestling News. Here's your news for Monday, October 15th, 2018. First and foremost, I would like to address the current situation going on between the WWE and the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Now, for a lot of you that know, there is a major controversy surrounding the Crown Jewel event, and a lot of you are probably wondering, well, what the hell is going on here? Well, I'm about to fill you in on everything. So, a couple of weeks ago, there was this world news story that came out on all major news networks that a Washington Post journalist by the name of Jamal Khashoggi I might have butchered his name there, and I apologize for that, went missing. A day went by, and all these major news networks reported that Khashoggi was an outspoken critic of the Saudi crown prince and the royal family of Saudi Arabia. Of course, the ones that made the deal with the WWE to do the two shows a year for 10 years. Apparently, Khashoggi was invited to go to a Saudi Arabian embassy in the country of Turkey, and he was never heard from again. Many speculate that Khashoggi has been murdered by the Saudi Arabian government, though Saudi Arabia themselves have stated that he is alive, he's just detained. But many countries do not believe that. So it's basically along the lines of, he said some bad things about the crown prince and royal family, and it's looking like they murdered him because of what he said. A couple of United States senators found out that the WWE was doing the Crown Jewel event in Saudi Arabia and they wanted the WWE to pull out of this event because they feared as though it would make the United States look bad as a country and it would make the WWE look bad and it could possibly hurt the WWE's business. And so that's how the WWE got into all this controversy with Saudi Arabia and Jamal Khashoggi there in the national news. I've heard on CBS NBC, ABC, reporting about the WWE being mangled up in the Saudi Arabia controversy. On October the 12th, this past Friday, Kane was interviewed by KnoxNews.com. Of course, as you know, he is the Knox County Mayor, his real name being Glenn Jacobs. And this is what KnoxNews.com reported. KnoxNews.com said, When asked for comment, Jacobs spokesman Rob Link said, The mayor's plans to wrestle at the event have not changed. Mayor Jacobs won't speculate on Mr. Khashoggi's disappearance. However, he and his family are in the mayor's thoughts and prayers. Also, Brian Alvarez on October 12th said that, I can't speak for everybody on the WWE roster. I haven't talked to everybody on the WWE roster, but I can tell you that a lot of people that are scheduled to go to Saudi Arabia, they don't want to go to Saudi Arabia. Alvarez continued on by saying, In fact, the majority of the talent doesn't want to go to Saudi Arabia, but the office wants to go to Saudi Arabia, and they have shareholders that they want to please with all the big money deals that they're getting. We'll see what happens. Then on the same day, Dave Meltzer noted the following about the status of the Crown Jewel event by saying, There have been backup plans that are being talked about internally if the show doesn't take place and that WWE was reportedly considering either moving the Crown Jewel event to another location or postponing the event and having the key Crown Jewel matches, the Universal title match, DX vs. the Brothers of Destruction, take place at Survivor Series instead, and that the belief was regardless of when and where the matches take place, Shawn Michaels and Brock Lesnar will still be paid the same amount of money. Then on October the 13th, PWIinsider.com reported that as of Saturday, WWE was still moving forward with the Crown Jewel event in Saudi Arabia. The company continues working on talent and other logistical aspects of the show despite the recent media coverage regarding the disappearance of Saudi national Jamal Khashoggi. Then on October the 14th, several people pointed out that the Crown Jewel page on WWE.com no longer listed the event location and a link to buy tickets. In addition to that, WWE hasn't been using the name Saudi Arabia in recent social media posts to promote the event. And just recently today, Dave Meltzer of 4FWOnline.com has noted that according to people in WWE, the Crown Jewel event in Saudi Arabia will happen as scheduled. This is what Meltzer said regarding the situation. What I was actually told was that unless the State Department tells them they can't go, or Donald Trump tells them they can't go, then they are going. Of course, as you know, Linda McMahon is the head of small business. She is a member of Donald Trump's cabinet, 
and I watch the news a whole lot and I can tell you that all the major news networks are reporting that Donald Trump has said that if Saudi Arabia did kill Khashoggi that the United States would retaliate for that though who really knows what's going to happen so the recent update is that the crown jewel event is still going to take place though things could change who really knows what's going to happen this is all a huge mess, and it's not looking good for the WWE. I heard a rumor that they lost over a billion dollars in shares because of that, though I don't really know if that's true. Take that with a grain of salt. Seriously. You know how people are on the internet. But the latest news, it's still going to happen. Stay tuned to Jam and John's Wrestling News for any further breaking news updates on this story, and there will be more breaking news updates on this story as time passes. New Japan Pro Wrestling star Tama Tonga wrote the following message on Twitter which has gotten fans talking. Tama Tonga tweeted, The Elite doesn't exist without Bullet Club. Good luck in WWE. Johnny Impact defeated Austin Aries to win the Impact World title at last night's Bound for Glory pay-per-view. People on social media have been speculating about the end of the broadcast because after the free count, Aries immediately got up and pointed towards Don Kallis. He flipped off the crowd and then abruptly walked out. Impact was seen mouthing the words, Are you kidding me? And the announcers did not say anything about Aries. Could be a work. Then again, it could be a shoot. Who really knows? Also, speaking of Impact Wrestling, they sent out the following today. It's the venue where it all started. The Asylum in Nashville, Tennessee. Impact Wrestling returns to its roots for Homecoming, January the 6th, 2019, live on pay-per-view. Former WWE star Shelly Martinez, you remember her as Ariel in WWE, she was the valet for Kevin Thorn on ECW, responded to the following tweet from Vince Russo. Shelly Martinez tweeted, I almost got raped while on an overseas tour. Since then, others have shared with me they were raped. So sad. Martinez also told the following story on Women's Wrestling Weekly by saying, I almost got raped when I was with WWE. We were overseas and there was a guy. He wasn't my boyfriend, but I'm the kind of person who when I'm just dating somebody, I only date one person at a time to see if I like them or whatever. I'm like a stage four clinger. So what happened is that they separated us and since I was in ECW, what would happen is half of us would go with Raw and half of us would go with SmackDown. So when they separated us, there was a group of guys who said, Our goal is to see who the first one to get you now that they separated you. I was like, dude, it's not even going to happen. And he was like, he's not even your boyfriend, who cares? I was like, I don't care, I like him. So it became some sick game, and the next thing I know, it was after a show, and we were partying or whatever, and the only reason why I don't say the names right now, or haven't yet publicly, is because there is a lot that I don't remember, and I don't want to be saying stuff that I don't remember. But I will say, and I've never said this before, but there was a group of guys, and one of them was Umaga, and when they saw he was getting the most aggressive with me, they left, and he got on top of me, and I just prayed. One of my fears is being raped, because when I was a little girl, I had some sexual abuse stuff, so it's just something that I feared. Martinez continued on by saying, So I prayed, because he's a big guy. And I'm like, please don't let this happen, please don't let this happen. And it was one of those things where God gave me the strength and I pushed him off of me and he fell to the floor and he got pissed and like left the room. The next thing I can remember was being at a show the next night and venting to my girlfriend Melina about it. Not telling anyone else and one of the guys yelled down, Hey Melina, did you smarten her up yet? I was like, smart me up to what? Keep my mouth shut? So I went right up to his face and I said, I didn't tell anyone except for her, and I can't remember anything else I said when I got in his face. A lot of this I didn't remember until a couple years ago, and I was totally suppressing it. Thanks to ringsidenews.com for the quotes. Jim Cornette commented on WWE Executive Vice President of Television Production Kevin Dunn in a response to a video that was posted of Johnny Impact during his Season 2 tryout for Tough Enough. Jim Cornette tweeted, Kevin Bucky Beaver Dunn has torpedoed hundreds of talented wrestlers over the years, as he is ashamed he's in the wrestling business and hates it, even though he's been made a millionaire by it. 
What he doesn't know about wrestling could fill a library. Also, he's a butthole. But of course he didn't say that. He said the other word. Gotta keep a PG. And finally here on Jamin John's Wrestling News, Matt Hardy recently did an interview with Jim Ross and here are a few highlights from that interview. On retirement, Matt Hardy said, Retirement, that's a big buzzword. People have asked me since I'm at a crossroads where I'm not 100% sure about what my in-ring future is, but as far as my television role on WWE, that will 100% be something in the future. I'm not sure in what capacity exactly, but like retiring is something I will never do. I'm so passionate about this. This is my love of mine, being involved in the wrestling industry. If you can't do it in the capacity you did years and years ago, just be involved in some shape or form. I'll always be involved in some way. Retirement is not something that will be in my future. And on becoming a road agent for WWE, Matt Hardy said, It definitely interests me. It is something that has been talked about. It is something I've experimented with a little bit in the past, and that could possibly be a part of my future. And when I return to the company at WWE, I'm very confident I will have an on-TV role as well, but I will also have a behind-the-scenes role. A producer role is something which I definitely think I could do one day. I don't know if that day could be in four weeks from now or four years or ten years from now, but I'm sure I'll do that at some juncture. Thanks to Raj.com for the quotes. That is your news for Monday, October 15th, 2018. Be sure to stick around for any further breaking news updates on the WWE Saudi Arabia controversy. Check back here tomorrow for another Jam and John's Wrestling News Flash Briefing on Amazon Alexa devices. Big shout out to everybody listening to this on YouTube. Subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already. Stewie Family is the name. Follow me on Twitter at John Caldwell, J-O-N-C-O-L-W-E-L-L. Follow me on Instagram, the Jam and John. If you'd like to sponsor Jam and John's Wrestling News or your wrestling promotion wanting to get your next big event out through the awesome power of Amazon Alexa, you can email me, jzcallwell at gmail.com. That's J-Z-C-O-L-W-E-L-L at gmail.com. Big shout out to Ryan Hurdle and Tony Nelson for subscribing to my Patreon. You too can subscribe to me by going to patreon.com slash jam and John. I have free packages on there ranging from free to $7. Not a whole lot of money. I would really appreciate it if you supported me a little bit financially. Once again, that's patreon.com slash John. This is Jamin' John saying thanks, goodbye, and I'll see you tomorrow.